Hi friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise and I'm not short, I'm just really far away. Today we are talking turtles, specifically why they might just be the weirdest reptiles out there. And I'm not talking about the fact that they have a beak for a mouth or that they can completely retract their heads into their bodies, which is also totally awesome. No. Today we are going to be going over some cool evolutionary adaptations about their shells and why some turtles don't follow the norm when it comes to other bodily functions. Intrigued? Yeah, me too. Let's go. a surefire way to irritate a tortoise keeper? Ask them what kind of turtle it is. You'll probably be very quickly corrected on the fact that it is a tortoise, but here's the thing. Not all turtles are tortoises, but all tortoises are in fact turtles. You know, like the whole toads and frogs thing. And some people are really into turtles, be they turtley turtles or tortoisey turtles like Agatha. And I totally get why, they are awesome but generally among the reptile community, kind of feel like a lot of folks sleep on how cool they really are. I mean, snakes, tegus, geckos, monitors, get all the hype, but turtles just kind of plod along under the radar. So let's start with the obvious feature that sets turtles apart from other reptiles. Have you ever wondered how did this happen? And why did it evolve this way? Evolution is gradual. This protective shell wouldn't have happened overnight, so what would be the benefit of earlier iterative versions of this? And how long would this have taken? And again, why, Agatha? Why? Well, if you're like me, you might think or have been taught a design like this evolved as a super way to keep yourself protected while you amble and stomp about all over the countryside looking for yummies to gobble up. And we'd be kind of wrong, but we're in good company in that. Lots of paleontologists and other smart people have long thought that the turtle shell evolved by osteoderms, thin bony structures on the surface, or scoots, thickening and growing larger eventually locking together to form a protective shell. That would eventually fuse with the turtle's ribs, which would then widen and flatten all the way out. All this being done specifically for protection, and well, it turns out turtle shells are an excellent example of an exaptation, where a trait developed for one reason or function becomes useful for another thing totally different. And it seems that turtle shells were initially made not for protection, but for digging. The earliest known turtles so far were Eunotosaurus. Back then, if you weren't a saurus of some kind, what were you even doing with your life? Eunotosaurus were burrowers that lived over 260 million years ago. They didn't yet have the carapace or top part of their shell. Oh, by the way, this is Poe. Agatha didn't shrink. This is Poe, her friend. They didn't yet have a carapace or top part of their shell of any kind, and their plastron, the bottom portion of the modern turtle shell, were just starting to develop. These ancestral turtles had bellies that were supported and reinforced by the flattening out of the ventral ribs, which were not actual ribs by the way, but I'm not gonna get into that today. Calling them ribs is good enough. I want ribs. <laughs> With the reinforced ribs held in place, they could no longer shift about, better stabilizing the body and their legs. So with the front legs anchored in place, this made them so much stronger and seriously increased their soil shoveling power. Eunotosaurus also had big long claws for breaking up the soil and thicker bones that could handle the high compression forces pressing down on them as they moved through and below the earth. This was carried over Put you down there. <laughs> Looks. What? Uh, what's happening? He peed on me. Of course he did. What else happened? He pooed. Cut, Garrett. You just. This has carried over to modern turtles, which is why most turtles and tortoises' front legs are so much thicker and stronger than their back legs. 
over time, these ribs widened to the point where they were actually fused together. Hello, plastron. And over lots more time, the wide fused belly ribs made it really hard to escape quickly from predators. This is where the shell's purpose started to shift, with evolution favoring those early turtles with tougher backs, offering additional protection. So the back ribs followed the front ones, widening and flattening out at the ends. Only then did the osteoderms or scoots grow and fuse, completing the carapace. Early paleontologists had the steps right in the evolution of the shell. They just had it in the wrong order and for the wrong reasons. But turtles weren't done. They did not stop at lengthening and widening their ribs. No, no. They took things a couple of steps further. Their ribs somehow grew and developed over their shoulder blades, not under like ours, and they fused them with their spine. Agatha, you've got an awesome shell, but you can't breathe properly. You can't move fast. So, was it worth it? A uh, quick aside here, there are two groups that all reptiles fit into. You reptilia, the true reptiles, and para-reptilia, or side reptiles. You reptilia include snakes, lizards, birds, dinosaurs, crocodilians, all those guys. Your normal reptiles. Para-reptilia includes all the early reptiles that are now extinct. And there was a lot of debate as to which group turtles belonged in. In the late 19th century, most paleontologists believed that turtles belonged in para-reptilia because they had a lot of the same basic skull structures as para-reptiles. Then the theory got narrowed down further in the late 1940s and turtles got claimed to a specific parareptilia group, pariosaurs. It makes sense that turtles would be thought of as pariosaurs because Anthodon and Bradysaurus have shells and plastron-like structures and turtles were thought to have developed scoots that would have developed into their carapace and plastron, which kept them firmly in this group. But then biologists studying modern day turtles growing in their eggs discovered that the lower ribs widen to form the plastron before the regular ribs would widen forming the carapace. They suggested that ancient turtles grew that way too, which would mean that they were not pariosaurs and instead were you reptiles. And that is what they are considered today. Though where they actually belong within you reptilia is still up for debate, which is a common theme in paleontology. There's actually a really cool video on PBS Eons that goes into detail about all this. I linked it in the description below. If you're interested, I highly recommend it. Okay, back to the implications of having a hard shell all around your body fused to your spine and rib bones. Because I don't know about you, but when I breathe, my ribs actually move. They expand out when I take a breath in and they squeeze in when I breathe out. And helping through this process is my diaphragm, a sheet of muscle that moves up and down, further adding to the volume differential in my chest cavity as I breathe. When I expand my chest cavity, the air pressure within it drops below the air pressure outside of my chest, air is drawn into my lungs, ideally through my nose or mouth, and the pressure equalizes. When I breathe out, breathe back in so I can speak. The volume of my chest cavity gets smaller so the air pressure inside increases above the atmospheric pressure and the air in my lungs is expelled. Didn't mean to that scare you, I'm sorry. Really forceful. <laughs> Flexible ribs in a diaphragm allow all that to happen. But turtles don't have diaphragms or flexible moving ribs. So they have had to evolve different ways to get oxygen into their body. The first are thin muscles attached to their shell that form what is described as a muscular sling that serves a similar function to a diaphragm, allowing for a change in volume for breathing. If you look at their head and neck, you'll notice that the bottom of their mouths and neck here will inflate and deflate. This is called bucopharyngeal pumping or buccal pumping, which is the same method amphibians use to inflate their lungs too. They're using the muscles in their throat to physically pump air in and out. They can also move air down into their lungs by shifting their legs in and out of their shell. Just because they can't expand out the side does not mean that they will be limited. So they will expand out the front, okay? But then of course, that's not enough for some turtles. And they just had to take it one step further yet again, because there's another very unusual type of gas exchange that occurs, well, it occurs in their butts. It's called cloacal 
respiration and it's not true mechanical breathing instead it's more of a passive exchange of gas it's similar to what the lungs do with the air that's been brought into them except that it takes place in the cloaca like reverse farting so when a turtle is in the water, a turtle turtle here, not a tortoise turtle, Redfoots like Agatha and Poe are excellent swimmers but are pretty unique amongst tortoises that way. Turtles, either because of hibernation or just because they live there, can pull water into the cloaca and extract dissolved oxygen from that water. Once enough oxygen is taken from the water, the oxygen is moved through the bloodstream to where it's needed, and carbon dioxide is sent back to the cloaca to be released out. So it's reverse farting, and then it's farting. <laughs> okay, I'm, you, you're gonna have to tell We're your gonna... father that. I think he would appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Different turtle species use this butt breathing ability to varying degrees. The Eastern snapping turtle, for example, gets between five to 31% of its oxygen consumption using this breathing method. Whereas Australia's Fitzroy river turtle can use cloacal respiration for the majority, if not all of its oxygen requirements. How cool or weird is that? Yeah, I think it's actually pretty high on both accounts, eh? All right, now remember at the beginning of the video when I made this gesture? Well, this is where it's going to tie in. If we're going to go along the logic path that turtles can breathe out of their butts, then then we have to face the fact there is something that they can do with their faces that ought to be handled by the other end, or at least it is for most other animals. There are some turtles who can pee out of their mouths. Because why not? So far, as far as we know, this is limited to a species of softshell turtle in China, Pelodiscus sinensi. These unique urinators have structures similar to gills inside their mouth, which researchers once thought was to help the turtles breathe. Makes sense. They live in fresh and brackish lakes, creeks, ponds, water. They live in water. Mouth gills can come in handy, yeah? Well, scientists noticed that when on land, these turtles had a strange habit of periodically dunking their heads underwater. One day, one of the scientists, upon seeing this behavior, thought to himself, if the turtle has lungs, why would it need to submerge its head in the water to breathe with its weird mouth gills? It must be drinking, right? Well, he also noticed that the turtles would wiggle their tongues around while they were underwater, so he was sure they weren't dunking under to get a drink. To figure out what was going on, he and his researchers bought some softshell turtles from a local market and kept them for about a week. And after measuring the amount of urea, the main ingredient in urine, in the water, they realized there was only 6% of the normal amount of urea in the water compared to other turtles. They weren't peeing in the pool. In most cases, that's a good thing, but here it's a mystery. So they would periodically take the turtles out of their tank and provide them with a small dish of water and the turtles would put their heads in the dish and wiggle their tongues around. What the researchers discovered in analyzing this water was more than 50 times the urea that is normally present in their mouth discharge. They were using the water as a mouth rinse, spitting out urea. Turns out, these turtles carry a gene that produces a specialized protein which assists in expelling urea. And here's the kicker. For these turtles, this gene is expressed in their mouths instead of in their kidneys. Why? I will tell you why. In the wild, softshell turtles live primarily in brackish water, which is more salty than freshwater, but not as salty as seawater. And if the turtles want to pee like all of their relatives, peer pressure they need to drink a lot more water to make that process work. Meaning they would be taking in a lot more salt than they can expel out in their urine. Eventually the sodium levels would build up in their bodies and they would die. So by sticking their head in water and opening their mouths to expel urea, they don't need to drink any salty water. It's thought that this ability to pee out of their mouths may have evolved to allow this and other softshell turtles to be able to live successfully in the brackish waters where they are found. Also, I should point out that it's technically not true urination because the turtle's urea travels through the turtle's bloodstream to get to their mouth instead of collecting in the bladder and being expelled out through the cloaca, but whatever, I think it should count as peeing. What is also really cool about this urea expelling ability 
is that one day this could help humans who have undergone kidney failure. Instead of having to use dialysis to remove waste from their bloodstream, the hope is that the patients would have a urea excretion mechanism in their mouths, bringing a whole new meaning to the term, rinse and spit. But that's a long way off. You know what's not a long way off though? The end of this video. And no, that was not your cue to dip out early, come back. I see you getting up to leave. Because before I wrap things up, I'd like to take a second and give a huge thank you to these fine folks here who have all been extremely generous in supporting my channel on Patreon. As a patron, you can get early access to videos, behind the scenes footage, extra vlog content, and a bunch of other extras that you can check out at patreon.com slash allcanadianreptilegirl. And I'd also like to thank all of you who are watching. Please take a second to hit that little like button and the subscribe. That stuff really helps a small channel like mine, or really any small channel. So tell me, did you know the turtles were actually once ground dwelling diggers and that's why they developed their sensational shell? I wanted to have like a cool sh word there, but I couldn't find any. So sensational is the best I got. If you have any ideas, please comment. <laughs> um, and did you know that there are some turtles who can breathe out their butts and pee out their mouths? I appreciate you taking the time to comment. I love reading what you have to say and I do my best to answer everyone. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye. And, and it, And, ah. <laughs> She's just breaking my pinky. She's just like, mm, you don't need this. I do. Strong ah. legs. Hence the digging. And the burrowing. <laughs> I hide my toes. Yeah. You sure? I'll come and get them. Mm -mm. This is where the shell's purpose. What's the matter? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> ah, the finger. Except for when you pooed and peed on me and then farted in my general direction. How did all that even fit in you? You farted. <laughs> He's cute! <laughs>